For this video today, we're just going to go over the essentials for setting up the LabVault simulation software. Before we do anything, we just need to ensure that in the lower right-hand corner that it says AC network 240 50Hz. If it doesn't, we can just simply click on Tools, Options, and then change this AC network from 120 to 240 volts. Ensure that the unit says SI and doesn't say Imperial. If it matches what I've got here, just click Apply and OK. So what we've just done then is we've just set up the simulation software to mimic Australian power, which is 240 volts, 50 hertz. With that complete, we can now start to import uh, modules. So off to the side, you can see an equipment list here. If it's minimized, just click on this arrow and it will pull it out. And we need to import a motor. For the sake of this exercise, I'm gonna use a DC motor, but we do have the option of using AC motors. When you import the motor, make sure you drag and drop it into the center point. And we'll see why in just a moment. In addition to the motor, I recommend just having a resistive bank on hand. And then you will definitely need a power supply, a four quadrant dynamometer, and a data acquisition soft, uh, control panel to go with that. Now, whenever you import a new motor or take out a motor, you're going to have to connect the pulley between the two. To do that, we can just right click on the panel, lower front panel, do this on the other one. And then you'll see normally my arrow, uh, my pointer is an arrow. We just need to hover over, you'll see it turn into a hand. When you see that, click left, click on your mouse and pull it over and left click again. And you'll see the pulley is now activated. Once you've done that, right click, raise front panel, right click, raise front panel. So we're almost set up and ready to go. Um, once you've got all your components, just to give you some more room, you can hide this list. And then we need to make a connection between the data acquisition software, as well as give it power from here. So first things first, I'm going to connect up power. So from either side, you could just click over it, drag, then drop like so, and you'll see a green light turn on there. If you need to zoom in, you can use these buttons up here, and I'm gonna do that for the next part. So I'm zooming in, and scroll down so I can see the screen, maybe zoom in twice more. Okay, and now hopefully you can see a T, an N, and an A here. You'll notice that my Y is in the way. Luckily, we can just, while hovering over the top, click on it, and drag it and move it out of the way. And then that exposes all the terminals for you. So I'm gonna connect up my T to T, my N to my N, and my A to my A. But before I do that, I wanna change it from a, white, a red wire to another color. So I'm gonna just select yellow. And I've done that because I plan on using red for my control connections later on. So once you've selected yellow, click where you wanna start and hold and drag it over to the terminal that you want to place it in. Again, N to N, T to T, and then last, A to A, or analog output. Now you can see that this wire also is over the power switch. It won't really matter, but just for the sake of it, I'm gonna drag the wire over so that it's exposed and not in the way. Then I'm gonna zoom back out. Move my screen to position. And now that's everything connected and ready to go for the experiment. So this video has just covered how to put in all the modules, how to connect up the pulley, first by lowering and then raising the panel. Next, we've looked at the connections. So we've given it a constant 24 power supply to the data acquisition software, as well as the cables between the four quadrant and the data acquisition. So now this data acquisition will be reading values from the four quadrant dynamometer. We've also covered how to zoom as well as the wire colors and how to set the initial power settings through tools options.